welcome back to Project Amber, where I'm home. So now it's time to start all the many, many repairs I've got to do on the van. Starting today with the clutch and flywheel, the thing that ended the trip early. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to crack on with that and um, take you along with it. It's going to be some swearing in this video. But behind closed doors, I'm a fool for your love. giant grey lump. I'm also going to apologise for the camera angles today because there's just not enough room under here to uh, do any decent recording. But this is my gearbox, so I've got to drop out this big bell housing, um, which requires taking off this um, support beam here, taking off the prop shaft, and then figuring out a way to lower it down without damaging it so that I can change the um, clutch and flywheel but yeah it's not there's not much room under here despite the fact that the van is, is jacked right up um, yeah it's gonna be an interesting one and I'm doing it on my own so someone might appear in the video later when I get really f***ed off and ask someone for help but yeah for now it's it's just me so right, we're gonna start by getting the prop shaft off I'm hoping I can just get the four bolts out and let it just sit out of the way there's me big bar gone There's not enough room. Uh, come on. Come on, one more turn. Ah, oh, yes. So I did a bit of research into the bolts for the prop shaft, thinking they might have been like reverse thread or um, Loctited on, which a lot of forums did say they're an absolute pig to get off, but this one's actually, it's doing all right. After the worst one though. The one I can't see. <laughs> uh, that's the swing I've got to the exhaust. Bollocks, it would be the last one, wouldn't it? Would be the last one to be an absolute. Uh, it's no good, I've got to take the exhaust off. Oh. One exhaust bracket. Fantastic. It's not the end of the world taking the exhaust off because this is actually another job I need to do because the exhaust is bolt on the prop shaft after all that what I'm gonna do as well now the exhaust is off is uh, drop it down to the local exhaust place and get them to put a new back box on it and tailpipe and I'll probably just refit it here so it's worked out quite well I'll end up saving myself money on the whole fitting cost and all that crap come on you little bastard I'm just now taking off the prop shaft supports. Oh, no, I'm not, because that is. <laughs> That's my broken 19 mil from when I ruined my wheel in France.
Next up was taking all the bolts out of the bell housing and the cross member. Not very interesting so I've sped it up. With a lot of faffing about they eventually come out but to get the last two out I have to drop the gearbox a little. Going down. Right, I can get to the top bolts. It's kind of a bit of blood. <coughs> Oh. Clear? Yeah. Uh, gearbox is off! At this point, my mate Manny popped in to help play mechanic, but after 10 seconds. You've got what? I can offer you an apology yeah, and a wet wipe. <laughs> so, after that absolute tragedy, he just sat down and drank beer. Wow. Alright, so that's what's got to all come out and off and. Oh my god! That's well out of a line. <laughs> There's a lot of buggery going on on that. Right, I think I might have found a big problem as to what's been going on. So this is the new release bearing, and that is nice and solid and what have you. Just gone to the bell housing and seen the old one, and this just fell off. That's the old release bearing. There's lots of swarf and sh there, and that is just absolutely so yeah, there's one major problem. Look who's arrived! It's Beemore Van! George had been well keen to tackle the clutch problem out on the road, bushcraft style. So once I'd told him I was tackling it, he jumped in the van and headed straight around. Uh, we can't get the bolts lined up, so we're going to try and cut off round here, get the inner plate out and grind these off and get access to all the bolts. With help of Georgia Beemore Van! I've condensed this down, but we were on this for hours, slowly chipping away at the mangled flywheel, trying to get little bits off at a time. What we really want is a big, thick drift chisel. Yeah. Um, we might be able to find a bolster somewhere. Yeah, try it. We've got this bit of the plate off. We crawl around here and got this bit of the plate off but there's still this area blocking all the bolts and we just can't get it to split and come off. But eventually we chipped enough off to prize the last little bit away. It's a good job we're not using this, isn't it? Yeah. Hey. That's only took half the day. How much is left of them bolts? A fair yeah. bit is a so you got a... That one's a bit questionable for the rest of it. Ah. That's what's left of the bolts. The whole flywheel has just been moving around and knackering everything. But they're all loose, so we're going to get it off. That's what's left of my flywheel. Never had to do something that malicious to get some off of a vehicle before. You? No. Uh. That being said, I've done 13,000 miles on the trip and it's had a problem since I bought the van and it was still going. True testament to Mercedes. Mercedes don't break down, they just make funny noises. So true. A few more bits from the flywheel. That's a part of the bearing, I think. It's been corroded to bits. Another bit there. I just, it's still astounding me now how this thing drove home because there was just nothing left of the flywheel whatsoever. Well, old friend, you've done me proud, but now it's time to part ways. If you've been working on cars and you don't look like us, you haven't worked hard enough. <laughs> Hello again. So yesterday the whole day was spent grinding out of my um, old flywheel that was completely mangled and just stuck onto the engine. So yeah, that took the whole day. Uh, now it's off. I'm back on my own, but it's just a case of putting the new stuff back in and bolting all back together. So starting now, we're putting the flywheel back in. Bolts in the original have been completely worn away and smashed to bits. 
from the, the old flywheel. Had to go to Mercedes today and get some new bolts. I think it was 30 quid for eight bolts. I don't like spending that kind of money on bolts. Oh my God. So that's an ambulance that actually works. Not like this one. Don't like spending that kind of money on bolts, to be honest. They're bolts. But yeah, I'm gonna get the flywheel back on and I'll have a working van again soon. <laughs> no, you won't. Oh my God. This way is a turn. Ah. Here now. Ah! I stabbed myself in the nip. Ah. Ah. Oh god, this is heavy. Ah. Ah, what am I doing wrong here? I've got to get the, the flywheel not only on its seat, but lined up with this little locating pin, which once it's up, I can't see. Come on now. Ah, yes. Okay. Bolts. Probably should have got the tools ready to start doing this. So you can't put the bit right in because obviously Mercedes has made it in such a way that you need extended hex bits to get through the inner plate to the outer plate bolts. Oh, gotta love Mercedes. Admittedly, this is the first time I'm doing um, a flywheel. So I'm adapting the principle of when you put a wheel on and doing bolts kind of side to side tightening. And then I'm gonna have to go on Google and Google the actual torque of all these bolts and do them up with a torque uh, wrench. So yeah, side to side, so it's going on evenly. I don't know if that's the correct procedure, but I know you do it on wheels, so let's do it on the flywheel. So the torque setting apparently is 112 newton meters. That. So we're gonna do them up to that. Oh shit. Um, would help if I locked the flywheel so it didn't spin the whole bastard engine. Sure we're going that way. There are tools for locking the flywheel when you're all like a professional, but I'm not a professional, so I've got a screwdriver. Yeah. With the flywheel on, next up was the clutch and pressure plate. Yeah. Oh god. Is that first one? Yeah. Right there, yeah? oh, I'm just thinking, I think, but I can't see any other way to be. It's not got to be a certain way, is it? As long as the locating pin is in the line. With that done, now the van can go back together. Despite the van being on ramps, it was still on a hill, and that made this bit really difficult because the van was leaning one way, the engine was leaning further that way and the gearbox wanted to lean the opposite way. Well, that's virtually in there, mate. You've just, just got to lift it, it's not there. You can get a bolt in that, which one. There it goes. That's the locator pin, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, she's in. There we go. All right, that is the gearbox back in. Although we've just put the key in, and we're getting this on the dash. So it's not all smooth sailing just yet. Got to figure out why it's not changing gear and coming up with a fault. I'm hoping it's just a case of we haven't bled the new thrust bearing enough and that's what's causing the, the fault. It's just not got enough pressure. So I'm gonna have a bleed of that and then hopefully it'll work. All right, so we've bled the system, um, gone all around it and it's still doing this. Um, so we called one of my dad's friends who's a mobile mechanic and he reckons it needs plugging in and recalibrating to the new clutch and flywheel because it's it's thicker so he's coming around tomorrow and he's going to plug it in because he's got the star drive that the sprinter needs and hopefully this weird f issue will be gone and i'll be able to drive but 
one major thing already just from starting the van uh, the big wobble that it used to do like on idle it used to just throw you around all over the place and that is completely gone so it's going to be so much smoother to drive and I'm really excited about having the first bash in it so um, I've got to take the gearbox back out cheesy the mobile mechanics just um, just come and gone uh, it's plugged the van in and the brand new thrust bearing that I've just put in, um, there's something wrong with it. Problem with that is I've got to take the whole gearbox off again in order to replace it and then try and get another one from this company. Just, just, oh, words don't even like, I've just done it. I've just done it. And now it's got to come back off again. And I've got to get all my tools out. It's alright. It's alright, I'll handle it. Oh. That's not good. Right, back to it. It's been a week of waiting because the company that sent me out the clutch has been absolutely useless and wouldn't send me a replacement out until I sent them mine back. Um, and yeah, so it just left me totally stuck. So I had to actually buy another uh, release bearing or thrust bearing, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully I'm going to send them this one back that's in the van and get my money back, but the way they are at the minute, I think that's going to take a lot of kicking and screaming and threatening. Oh, you have no idea. That's coming later. Before I, uh, I get my money back. But anyway, I've got the new bit. I'm going to be taking the whole lot apart again to put this back on. It's eight o'clock in the morning. Can't really be asked, but I want my van back. So here we go. None. And I've got him to contend with as well. Let's be honest, no one really wants to see that whole process again. So here's just some clips of Lance getting in the way. What do you want? Ah, what do you want? Get your bum out of my face. Hey, we're back at this stage. Um, bolts are all loose on the gearbox, it's about to drop again. I didn't record any of it because, well, I didn't want to do it again, so I was pretty sure you guys didn't want to see it again. Um, yeah, so it's nearly coming out. La 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 Come on, you bastard. Oh. There it goes. And then he landed on me. Whew. End of day, I don't know. Let's just say week one. And um, it's still not working. So we put put the new part in. Um, when we plugged it in with the old part in, so just the sensor was plugged in, it cleared it. Uh, put the new part in and it come up with the fault again. So it, the fault is only apparent when the thrust bearing is being pushed right in. Um, so once it's being married to the engine, it's that's when it's thrown a fault. We've bled everything over and over again, took off all the sensors, cleaned them up, put everything on, still nothing. Even uh, the mobile mechanic, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Look, he says, luckily, I'm gonna have that second part that I bought sent back, so should get my money back on that, at least, but this little f still isn't driving. And it's at the stage now where I kind of need it. Um, I'm back home, I need to start earning money, and this is my only form of transport. And it's completely empty inside. Yeah, this is the van at the minute. Tools everywhere, no floor, no bed, no log burner. Ah, I'm so stuck right now. So yeah, it's not going too well at the minute. Um, I'm slowly losing my rag with it, but we'll get there. 
hope. After a lot of research and going back through the footage of this video to look at the original parts, we realised the splines on the new pressure plate, the thing that the thrust bearing pushes back and forward, was sitting a lot further forward than the original one. The self-adjusting system had clicked forward as we were fitting it and needed resetting. So we knocked up a jig to press it down and reset it all. So we refitted it, put the gearbox back on, but the fault would still come back on. So we took it off and found that the self-adjuster had moved again and it did it for another five times. Something was seriously wrong and the supplier just wasn't helping me. So I called the manufacturers. You are looking at the face of a broken man right now. But I think I've got to the bottom of it. So the first company sent me out a kit. That was wrong. They told me it was my fault. They told me they called the manufacturer up and that I had bought the wrong kit and not checked and because I'd fitted it, I wasn't getting my, part, my money back. So I've just called up LUK, which is the manufacturer of all these parts. Um, they didn't even take my reg number. They just took the part numbers off the friction plate, the pressure plate and the flywheel and they've just come straight back to me and said, yeah, you've been supplied the wrong clutch plate. And that's from two kits. Two kits from two completely different places have sent me the wrong friction plate. I have took my gearbox out seven times and the company I bought my first clutch off lied to me. So, I'm, at, uh, I'm actually shaking with anger. I have spent a week and a half on this thing. Can I go to the headquarters and punch him in the head? I decided to try and calm myself down by painting my walls and getting the new paint job done. So I set the GoPro up to get some footage and a time lapse of painting the walls, but my blood was just boiling and I ended up calling them, which was probably a bad move. Hello, is that Paul? Yeah, mate, you spoke to me about four or five days ago. Uh, the Sprinter Clutch semi-automatic told me I bought the wrong parts. Yes, you did. You said you called the Pilot UK and they've told you that I've bought the wrong kit. And that's not true, is it? Because I've just called up Pilot UK. They didn't even take my reg number. They just took the part numbers of each and come to the conclusion that the friction plate's wrong. The part that you should have known about and you've supplied. So why the f did you lie to me? At this point, I kind of lost my cool and I can't really broadcast what I was saying, but it worked. After these choice words, they decided they could take the parts back and give me my refund. This is the new part, ordered by Cheesy the mobile mechanic. No idea why his name's Cheesy, but I ordered it from him because he actually knew what he was talking about. You can see the splines are way further down. As we were tightening it up, they just closed in as they should. The area of this that sits against the friction plate was a whole five mil thicker. This explained why the pressure plate splines weren't going down as we were bowling it on, which was pushing the thrust bearing too far backwards and causing the fault. Oh hey guys, I'm gonna give you a little insight into van life. So this is where I've been spending the past two weeks. So picturesque, so comfortable. I mean, I've got a bolt in the back of my head and the gearbox is about to fall on me. It's great. This job damn near broke me. No man should take his gearbox in and out seven times. There's a clip coming up in a sec and I look properly haggard with massive bags under my eyes. But seeing those splines close down as we bowled on the pressure plate was a massive relief. Knowing this was the last time we were putting the gearbox back in. But annoyingly, until my refunds come, I couldn't get my nice new shiny exhaust like planned. So I just beat the crap out of the original one to wedge the baffle inside and stop the rattle. And that'll have to do for now. Although doing that caused this. <laughs> So as a final little view from the van, um, I can't get reverse. I've checked the fluid and that's okay. I think it just needs a good run for everything to like settle in and bed in. But where I'm parked at the minute on some ramps, the only way I can get out is to go backwards first. So I'm stuck. Why won't this job just go together? So I had to call him for some help. Let's have a countdown. Three, two, one. Uh, 
So finally, after a week and a half of pure hell, I could take the van out on a test drive and see what all this work had achieved. Oh my God, it's so nice. Oh, it's just changing gear. It's doing what it was built to do. Fourth, straight in. I can't like describe how different this is. Oh, just got into a bit of traffic. It's gonna be weird trying to get used to just driving this worry-free with my ass not going 5p, 50p all the time. Because now it's just, the improvement is just unreal. Um, I mean, with that flywheel being so far out of a line, I mean, when I first bought the van on idle, it just used to go, 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 And I just thought that was down to it being a big truck, you know, like a, you know, like a bus kind of, when it's not an idle. But now, it's just smooth as silk. I can't get over it. I mean, obviously I don't have a before, what it was like before, but I can give you a reconstruction. So I'd be like this on idle, and then I'd pull away, and it'd be like, oh, oh, oh my God, and then we'd be away. But now, oh, it's so smooth. See, pulling away now, this would be horrible because I'd just be like, is it going to go into gear? Is it going to slip? Is it going to just like completely f*** up on me? But now I can just get around the roundabouts, focus on what I need to do. And uh, I mean, I can even kick down and give it the beans when I want. I was always too nervous to give it the beans, like coming, coming into roundabouts or pulling out of a junction, just you know, to get off quick uh, through fear of the clutch just exploded but now I can just do what I want right we're in full automatic now I haven't been able to use full automatic for I don't know three months because it just doesn't work but it's around about now it's dropping down the gears pulling out oh. that was a kick down there's another one it's never kicked down before. Oh, it's like driving a sports car. No, it's not, it's really not. But it's good. Oh, I think I've got a shotgun. Uh, yeah, I've definitely got a shotgun. <laughs> Don't know who that was, but they're waving at me. Admittedly, fourth gear a minute ago did crunch, but it still slotted into gear. Usually it'd like, crunch, go out of gear, rev up, and I'd have to like faff around trying to get into gear, but, but now at least it still goes into gear. I'm guessing the sheer amount of torment fourth gear that's been put through um, has just damaged it a bit, but I can live with that. And if worse comes to worse and it fails completely, I've, I'm just going to change it to manual. This semi-auto stuff, I've had, had a bad done with it. Full auto. Approach the roundabout. Oh, this is so nice. Oh. Well, that's that. It works. I'm so happy. Took a little bit longer than I wanted to. It was a little more stressful than I thought, but it's done. <laughs> Just going for that drive now, it was so worth it. I'm, I'm really happy. So, van's back on the road. Won't be going back travelling yet because I've got no money left. But there'll be plenty of videos on changing the interior and other fixes I'm going to be doing on the van while I'm back. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching me lose my absolute And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.
I can't get reverse again. Oh, come on!